Hi, I'm Reverend Carol, and here is my reflection for Ascension Day 2020, based on the readings from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, and the Gospel of St Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The ascension of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, one of the most important festivals in the Christian year. We celebrate it, but I wonder how it felt for the disciples. I imagine the feelings of woe, despite the Gospel account saying that they returned to Jerusalem with joy. For them, this was a second bereavement, grief at the loss of the same person twice within just a few weeks. That surely doesn't happen very often in real life. But there was also joy, for Jesus was sending an advocate from God in his place, though they knew not, nor had any real understanding of what or whom that power from on high might be. And joy that Jesus has said that he would return. If you see St Luke chapter 21, verse 27. In their minds, this would be in a few weeks, months at the most. They had no idea Jesus would apparently not return in their lifetimes. In Luke's Gospel, the writer doesn't particularly describe how Jesus was carried up to heaven. But in the Acts of the Apostles, which is attributed to the same writer, Luke, the description of the Ascension is much more vivid. Jesus was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. We are to assume that the two men in white robes who appeared were angels and they said that this Jesus would come back in the same way that they saw him go into heaven. This is the one sentence that always grabs my attention. On a literal level, does this mean that Jesus will really return from behind a cloud? Should we be looking to the sky at each cloud that is formed there to see if we can see one that may just be the herald of the second coming? It may be so, but on further reflection, I think perhaps we could look at it on another level, from a different angle. The cloud could be a metaphor for the veil that continually hides Jesus from our view. That it is not that we are still waiting for him to come for a second time, in the physical sense at least, but that he is here with us now and we just can't quite see him. Something akin to someone telling us a joke and we just don't quite get it until it is explained to us. And then we see quite clearly the intention in the punchline. Maybe the example of a joke we don't understand is not quite right. Maybe St Paul says it better in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. However, we often fail to understand that we are not seeing things as they really are. We look through rose-tinted glasses, assuming we understand all but we frequently look from our own perspective, not acknowledging there might be another way to see. 
as with not understanding the joke. We don't ask for it to be explained so that we don't appear to others as being silly, dense perhaps. There is no shame in asking, but we are loath to ask. And so we laugh along with everyone else, pretending that it all makes perfect sense. When Ruth and I went to the Holy Land nearly five years ago now, we went to the chapel of the Ascension. Here is a picture of it. The exact spot Jesus is believed to have ascended from. Inside is a piece of stone with an indent which is supposedly the footprint of Jesus as he left this earth on his ascension back to be with his father. This is what it looks like. Some believe it is the true footprint. Others are more sceptical. Is this a case of seeing dimly? The public cemetery outside Jerusalem is just down the road from the Chapel of the Ascension and a lot of Jewish Christians are buried there. Jewish Christians from all over the world because they truly believe that Jesus will return to this exact same spot at the second coming and they want to be amongst the first in line to see him again on the day of resurrection and the final judgment. The cemetery is now full so don't go thinking you can reserve a grave space. Back to the plot. The disciples return to Jerusalem to wait for the Advocate, something we will hear more about in a couple of weeks when we celebrate Pentecost. In the meantime, as we are also disciples of Christ, let us ask through the power of the Holy Spirit that came to us in our baptism for courage to go out and show the love of God to all we encounter. In a lot of situations, actions can speak much louder than words. Currently, perhaps helping our isolated neighbours by doing some shopping for them. You know the sort of thing. Our kindness and generosity is showing through our actions that the love of God in Jesus is with us all now, even if through our dimly lit sight, we cannot see him. Jesus has ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. But he is also with us now. We don't have to look to the skies for that special cloud. Jesus is here and accompanies us on our journey through life, now. And when we finally understand that Jesus is in everyone we meet, then the veil will be lifted and we will see clearly the kingdom of heaven rather than only the glimpses we see now and then. Amen.